the Buffalo uh, Buffalo people are great. You know, like I I I, I, I made a lot of Buffalo friends. I really did. Problem was, I came to I came to Buffalo through a very with a, it's a difficult trade with me going through a very 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 complicated um, concussion from Ottawa the year before, where the Hamburglar went in and went twenty zero and one and kicked me out of there. Yeah, and yep. Yep. <laughs> had a pretty crazy summer. Came, came to and then get traded. Uh, Buff uh, Ottawa. They handled that concussion thing terribly, but then just traded me, and then all of a sudden, okay, Buffalo, here we go, right? And I go to Buffalo, and I wasn't ready, man. Like I was gone through my concussion, all that stuff. I wasn't in shape. I wasn't, and uh, you know, I came there, and uh, I tear everything in my foot the first game. In your foot? On a fluke. Damn. Yeah, on my foot. So I, I tear the second period of the game against Ottawa, of all teams at home. First game of the season, I tear everything. I had a, a high ankle sprain and tear everything in my oh. foot and go through that. And uh, there, there was a bunch of problems. They hired like 12, 13 new people in that team. Uh, that year that never played, never been around hockey, all the new the, the medical guys and physios and all that stuff is, they took them in from all over the world and never seen a puck in their life. And, you know, I ended up getting a lot worse and ended up having surgery at the end of that season, you know, mm. um, because they just kept screwing it up, which, you know, it's, 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 you know, surgery and all other types of things, you know, you get after surgery opens up, but the big problem when it's, when I talk about Buffalo, right. It's like, if you go through some mental problems or if you go through anxiety or depression and whatnot, and they're inc incredibly passionate fan base. Listen, man, like it has that, you know, energy when you're coming to the rink, oh. like it hits you in the face when you open the door from the parking lot, just going to a game, it hits you in the face right before you open it. It's like, this sucks, you know, like, I'm sorry. And I'm not trying to offend any buff Buffalo fan, but man, then you go and you try to play the game you love with the pr uh, pressure and stuff that comes with it. And you go out and warm ups, and it's just, you know, because they had lost for so many years. It, it, it was just like, they hate you, you know, like it, it, it wasn't fun. And they, uh, you know, they call out the names before, before the game and, Okay, they cheer for Jack Eichel, but boo the rest. You know, oh my god, <laughs> it's like and now he wants uh, out. <laughs> and he don't even want to be yeah. there. Oh, okay. No, again, it's another medical problem there too. I mean, the, yeah. the shit that it appeared to uh, to some of the players when I was there, and especially to me regarding my ankle. I mean, it was crazy, man. I had a high ankle sprain. They had me on the bike one week after. One week after, I had my what. Uh, fully torn everything worst grade high ankle sprain one week after they put me on the bike with a special boot i should have been walking on it maybe six to eight weeks after i got it yeah. happened they had me doing leg presses with like 300 pounds three weeks in three weeks into it and i re-sprained everything and and i have to have surgery you know so I, weren't you like I, uh, this fucking hurts like what are we doing did you have any sort of rebuttal yeah there? well uh yeah no nah. man it's, it's not really how it works is not when you're younger uh you know and, yeah. uh, they have these so-called professionals and tells you what to do or you understand what i mean it's yeah i get it man i do no, you're it is, you're, man you're, you're yeah, what hurts, eichel so. said eichel said it is, i mean eichel looked at what eichel said himself he doesn't take he doesn't make his decisions about his body yeah him you no know? you got to trust the medical Just people around you man you got to trust the medical people yeah, yeah. but they even even trusted he i mean even he, he wanted to have another surgery he's not allowed to have what would do what he wants with his body right I don't know. It's I know, a common man. theme i know it's crazy so listen you go to new york though like you have an unbelievable season vesna finalist you win the Jennings. They put the Rangers on your trophy. We can't let that happen, Rob. And they got to put the get, get the right <laughs> new, get the right New York team. Yeah, that's a, yeah I like that one. I yeah. have that uh, one at home too. <laughs> but listen, like w w one of the best like seasons that I've seen yeah. from a goaltender from a, in a long time, man. You were incredible. Yeah, yeah. But what happened? Like, what's the real story? Why you couldn't get a long term contract there? They offer you something, then they turn to Barlamov, and you end up 
going to Chicago on a one-year deal? Like, what's the real story there? Well, the real story is very, very simple. Um, uh, and I've been very upfront. I have no no reason to lie about it because, you know, there's not many people in the league that I respect more than Lou Lamarillo and Barry Trot. Mm-hmm. The intention was to get things done. Uh, our end-of-the-year meeting, we were supposed to, you know, Get, uh, we we talked and they wanted uh, was mutual interest obviously for both of us to get something done and uh, we I was going to be a priority to get something done quickly that didn't happen and things change you know in hockey for sure but uh, you know that we you know we have Andres Lee and we had a few few other uh, players that were also signing deals that year I think Everly and uh, uh, maybe it was. Was it Nelson too? Maybe I don't remember. And uh, Lee was up for a big contract, and that was me. And um, you know, we just we kept taking time. Then we went to awards. It's like everything's going to be fine. All this stuff, and you know, we just keep waiting for an offer. You understand what I mean? But they wanted us to give them a number, and that's not really how it works for everyone else. You understand what I mean? So um, to make it very simple, you know, they offered me. I think. The first thing they offered me was like two year extension for, I think it was four and a half, four and a half million for two years. And uh, obviously I wanted term. Uh, and uh, I thought it was, I was worth more than five, uh, five million because, you know, yes, I had a good season that year, but I still had a 92 percentage over my tenure in Buffalo and Ottawa as well. So, you know, I still had some and uh, was a best of finalist and all these things. I mean, I sh- I felt like it was worth more. And uh, this is exactly what happened with Long Island. I had, I was promised that something was going to happen quick. It took the whole summer while seeing other players getting signed to good big deals. And then all of a sudden they came to me with a two-year, uh, two $4.5 million deal and has told me, you have to decide today. Mm. You have to decide today. I'm like, guys, I got some principles in my body as well. You know, I've been waiting all summer when you guys promised me one thing, and now you're giving me a day to to make up my mind. You understand what I mean? And I said no to it. And, uh, yeah, they moved forward, and uh, they had uh, they were full in on uh, that Panarin thing, I think. Uh, or I know they, they, they tried to get him, and he also had the same uh, agent as Varlamov, so they kind of, we're trying to get them in a package in the beginning, but then obviously Panarin ended up going to New York and Valamo went to Long Island. So um, that's what happened. We couldn't agree on a term, and I wanted more than one day to think about it while they were waiting, had me waiting for a full summer. And when I didn't take their decision fast enough, they moved on. So And nobody saw you going to Vegas. I remember when that trade came down, everybody was like, what yeah. the fuck? Like, yeah, he's I'm going to good. Vegas? Like, this is crazy. Yeah. So you get there yeah. and right, right off the bat. Like, when you when you first, like, get to know Mark andre Fleury, like, what is it about your two personalities that allowed you guys to, like, respect one another and appreciate one another and work together, Robin? Because that doesn't always happen, as you know. Uh, I think, you know, first, uh, I mean, it happened. Well, I was on a roll when I got traded, and I just uh, came out of nowhere, and then I figured out this Vegas. Uh, I was as confused as everyone else, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, go there, and, you know, obviously a good team, great group of guys, all that stuff. You know, we're all professionals, and it took me and, and Mark uh, a little bit of time to kind of get to know each other, but I think last season was, you know, really good for us. We, you know, got really... We got a lot closer, and uh, you know, um, obviously, uh, it didn't end the, the season didn't end the way, the way we wanted. But uh, it is the weird thing about sports, right? I mean, it's um, people talk about people keep always talking about loyalty. While we've been we've proven year after year after year that there is no loyalty in sport. There's never been, you know. Look, well, what I, we just went through Tom Brady now leaving the Patriots. Yeah. You understand what I mean? Like, people are still talking about loyalty. There is, I mean, that's the best athletes of all times, probably. You know, you know what I mean? Like, it's, uh, it's crazy. And I know it's going to happen to me too at some point, you know, and, uh, it's hap- you know, it's, it's 
just all crazy what's going on, you know. It's just part of the business. It happens all the time. Lundqvist, two years ago, he was sitting in the stand. The guy that's been running that franchise for the last 10 years, you know. He didn't even sit on a bench. Jesus. You want to talk about loyalty? Now, okay, so listen. So as an athlete, though, like, do you just come to, like, accept that? Or is it okay for you to say, yeah, like, no, should. it's not okay? Like, how do you look at it? No, I mean, I've accepted it, you know. I, that's why, I, I mean, me and McCrimmon and the management in Vegas are very open. And I've been, I mean, that's, they're, they have winning. They want to win every year. And they will do whatever they can to make the team better. If you don't perform, you're out. End of story. If you can't, if you can't, uh, Take that pressure. You can't play in Vegas um, because that's the, that's what's going to happen. You you don't perform in Vegas, you're gone. The, the picture came because I started, and uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean it, yeah. I've gotten to know Walsh, and he's I got to give him a lot of respect because he is one of the agents that are actually fi- really fighting for all the NHL players' rights, and I've gotten to know him, and he's actually a very good guy. But it just shows like how far he's willing to go for his clients, right? Even though it kind of it screwed me quite a bit, and I've told that to him. I mean, he, you know, I got a lot of social media heat for that, you know, because it was kind of like a waltz rallying the flurry cult against mm. me. You understand what I mean? Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. it was not it was not easy, uh, you know being around my phone, my social media during that time, you know, and I was a starting goal and we're trying to go win the Stanley Cup, you know, so uh, it's probably not the best play, but, uh, you know, again, it's passionate for his own player, but, you know, it's what it is.